Hey everyone, today we'll be showing you what a spider mite infestation looks like and what you can do to get rid of them. Spider mites are probably the most feared out of all the tiny insects because on top of causing leaf damage, they can single-handedly destroy a harvest with their webbing that can completely cover an entire plant pretty quickly. Spider mites are also so tiny that they're really not spottable with the visual inspection. So let's take a look at first how to detect them and then how to get rid of them. Spider mites suck out the juices from the plant leaves so the damage they deal look like this with a tiny light colored dots throughout the leaves. So anytime you see damage like this, you'll want to figure out just what is causing it, since a ton of other pests also deal damage that looks similar to this. Some of these are large enough to see, like white flies and aphids, while others, like thrips and spider mites, might need to be magnified to be identified. Of course, when spider mites reach a critical mass, they'll also start to cover the plants and flowers with this thin webbing that's so dense, it can almost look like a fabric sheet covering your leaves. Not to be confused with regular spider webbing, which is much larger and not nearly as dense. So if you see something like this, you'll need to act right away. First of all, if the webbing has formed on or between any of your leaves, you'll want to remove them as it's most likely also infested with eggs. Next, the simplest way to stop the active spider mites from spreading is to use an insecticidal soap, which can be purchased online or made easily with 2 tablespoons of liquid dish soap, 2 tablespoons of vegetable oil mixed in a gallon of water. Insecticidal soap will kill the spider mites on contact, but once it dries, it's not effective anymore. So you'll need to spray thoroughly, especially on the underside of your leaves. Unfortunately, the insecticidal soap also doesn't kill the spider mite eggs. So multiple applications spread a few days apart will be needed. A neem oil spray is another organic option that can be used by itself or in a rotation with an insecticidal spray, as it'll both repel the spider mites and prevent the larvae of newly hatched eggs from developing properly so that the life cycle doesn't continue. To create a physical barrier on the ground, diatomaceous earth is an organic solution that can be spread throughout the top layer of soil, creating a physical barrier that'll kill the spider mites on contact but is perfectly safe for plants, humans, and pests. This will also stop any spider mites from crawling from one plant to another, and can even be powdered onto the leaves with something like a paintbrush to prevent spider mites from crawling on them. Another method if your grow space is outdoors that's less reliable but much more green is to release a bag of ladybugs or lace wings in your grow space. Both of these pest eaters can actually be purchased by the thousands and shipped alive for a really reasonable cost. Just know that these probably won't completely remove the pests, but they will dwindle down the population of not just spider mites, but almost all of the small plant eating pests. Just be mindful that both of these bugs will leave your grow space in search of more food once the pest population is almost gone. So while they're not a long-term solution, it never hurts to have more of these around your garden. They're also susceptible to diatomaceous earth. So if you're using one of these options, don't use the other. And that's it. Like the content? Then be sure to check out our beginner's guide to creating CBD products from scratch. Available at Amazon in print and digital with links in the description below. You can also find us at hempinapot.com.